What's going on guys, El Tiburon here. I'm here today with a little bit of a video response to Retro Rivals. They recently dropped the video, both Jen and Scott, on games that made them gamers. Uh, I left a comment on Jen's video on her games that made her a gamer. And she, you know, commented back like, hey, why don't you do one? I'd like to check that out. So here I am making my response video to them. And if you don't, you guys don't know the Retro Rivals, Jen and Scott, check them out. They're they're one of my favorite channels. I, I was watching them before I started doing YouTube, so they're definitely an inspiration. I'll put a link to their channel down below. And this got me thinking because this isn't a list of your five favorite video games. This is a list of video games that kind of brought you into the gaming world. You know, kind of sucked you in. Um, so I, I really uh, had to think about that. Um, I had a difficult time at first, but I had to really think about the kind of gamer I am. I don't primar primarily play one genre. Maybe shooters, one can argue. Maybe I play a lot of shooters, but I, I kind of like move around a lot. I'll play some, you know, some fighting games. I'll play some shooting games. I'll play horror games. I'll play some beat em ups. I'll play some wrestling games. I really had to think about what are the games that kind of pulled me in. And at number one, I've got Super Mario Brothers on the Nintendo. This was definitely the gateway drug into video games. This was, I think, the first ever video game I actually played was a Super Mario Brothers. And back when I got this, I actually didn't really want a Nintendo. Maybe not, I didn't want one. I, I didn't really ask for one. One day I just came home and my dad had a like a bunch of clothes on, on the bed. And he's like, oh, why don't you look under the clothes? And I was like, okay. Like I was really, really like confused. I had just come home from school. And I remember walking to the bed and, and lifting like a shirt. And there was like a Nintendo controller. And I was like, what? So then obviously right away I knew and he kept telling me, oh, lift lift up that sweater lift up these these sweats it was a really uh, i guess you could have like put it in a box or, or wrapped it but that's not really my dad's style he just threw some some clothes on top so yeah with, with that nes you know came super mario brothers and that was really the first video game i ever played so that's a game that kind of brought me in because before that i was i was more of a more into like playing with toys like Ninja Turtles and He-Mans and you know playing outside. This was the the first video game I ever played and it kind of sucked me into playing the Nintendo Super Mario Brothers. And admittedly as a Mario myself because my real name is Mario. K Fabe brother, it's Mario. Uh, I I've always felt kind of like a like kind of like a connection to I guess the Super Mario Brothers uh, video games even though I think after Super Mario Brothers 3, I took like almost like a 20, 25 year break in playing Super Mario Brothers until Super Mario Odyssey. But I've always felt like a kind of a connection to him because I'm a Mario myself. So, you know, if I had a dollar for every time I heard, hey Mario, where's Luigi? I, I, maybe I could have paid off my mortgage already. But yeah, one of the games, one of my five games. It's got, I gotta go with Super Mario Brothers. Next game I got on the list is that it's not actually an Xbox One game. It's Street Fighter, Street Fighter 2 World Warrior on the arcade cabinet. I, I mean, I, I would have showed that up, but I don't have an arcade cabinet in here. But um, Street Fighter 2, I will say this is the first arcade game that really, really like sucked me in. I used to have a liquor store down a couple blocks down from where I lived. And, you know, I just remember going down to that liquor store and every, at least a couple of times a week and playing Street Fighter 2 and just trying to conquer, you know, each fighter and trying to figure out, like, the strategies, right? Like, I would go, I wouldn't really only go with, like, a quarter or 50 cents. That's all I really had. So I had to go and, you know, get good, right? So I had to go and figure out the little, the little hacks, you know, like Zangief. You just do the jump kick in the corner and cheese them that way. You would have to figure out like, okay, with Vega, I, ha I have to stand here when he climbs up so I can hit him with the high kick. And uh, just the adrenaline of getting so far in the game and then losing. And then having to come back a couple days later to try to 
beat the game. I I, I want to say I, I eventually did beat it with one quarter, and I was never really like good at the game. Um, and 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 I'm I'm reminded of that when I play some of my buddies like Omega, or Tylord or Billy or Geniuses. We recently uh, met up at the SoCal Gamers Expo and we played at a barcade and I think I won one match against my friend Billy out of like the six matches I played. I got waxed, but it's just a game that got me really into like the arcades and uh, yeah, I gotta give it to Street Fighter 2. Super fun game, super, super addicting too and challenge and it has like the right balance of challenge and fun. So I gotta, gotta give a little shout out to Street Fighter 2, the arcade game. Next up, I know not a lot of people talk about sports games. Sports games don't get a lot of love in the gaming world. But I, I gotta go with NBA Live 97 on the PlayStation with Mitch Richmond from the Sacramento Kings on the cover. Uh, I, this is when I kind of started falling in love with basketball. You know, when Magic Johnson came back and the year after, I'm, I'm an LA guy, so the year after we get Shaq and we get Kobe. So I, I was like deep into 90s basketball deep into the lakers and at this time i had a playstation and i got nba live 97 and this is the first game that really got me into playing the season mode the exhibition mode you know playing the 82 games and 10 minute quarters and building my roster and making trades and creating myself in the game of course as a point guard with a deadly three-point shot of course and um it kind of led me into buying bas a basketball game almost for every year from I would say at least from like 97 to like 2019 2020 I kind of fell off in these last few years but it really got me in that zone of buying all the 2k's especially the 2k's from 2k 2k with Allen Iverson all the way to like 2k 20 2k 21 and uh, it all started with NBA Live, you know, back when NBA Live was the big dog and was relevant. And uh, yeah, it's just so fun. You know, I, I know a lot of people, like I said, don't really give a lot of love to sports games. But man, there was a time where I, I literally in my shelf, I would have like three video games. And it was always an NBA 2K game. It was always some kind of single player game. And it was always like some kind of multiplayer shooting game. But every year I had to get the newest 2K and I had to build my roster. I had to create my character. I had to go through the whole season, play in the, in the playoffs. And, and even I would do like multiple seasons. I was so hooked into those uh, 2K games, basketball games. But I got to give it to NBA Live 97 because that was the first one that introduced me to that season mode. Right. But uh, yeah, got to show some love to to a sports game. The next game on the list, I actually don't own a copy of it, but it's Resident Evil 1 on the PlayStation. This, this, um, putting this one on the list because I'm a big survival horror fan. I'm a big horror fan, as you can see. I have like Annabelle and freaking Mikey Myers hanging out right here. Been a big horror movie fan since the late, like the 80s and 90s. Um, but Resident Evil 1 was the first horror game I ever played that really sucked me into the story really sucked me into that mystique of like what's behind that door and what's going on in this mansion and it really like brought me into that world of survival horror games because I didn't play um, I think Alone in the Dark was before this right I didn't play that so I, I can't say that sucked me in but Resident Evil 1 like what an experience what a game a lot of jump scares. I still remember this game being like an experience. People would come over, like kids in the neighborhood would come over just to see this game, Resident Evil 1. And of course, I had to give I had to give them the controller right in the part where the dogs jump out of the windows and watch a, I remember one of the kids was like screaming, like literally screaming at the top of his lungs. Another kid, my uh, neighbor Juan came over. I, he, the dogs jump out of the window. He puts the controller down and he walks out of the, my apartment. He's like, I'm not playing this. <laughs> and he left. So, uh, even though I don't own it and I don't own it because, uh, 
I don't want to go back and play Resident Evil 1. I kind of want to leave that memory as it is. I, I know that for those people that maybe listen to the Retro Wave podcast, I've talked about this game before. I kind of want to leave the memory as is. I, I do, however, want to play like the HD remaster that came out. I think it was on the 360 or Xbox One. I would like to go back and play that one, but the original, I kind of want to leave it as is. But Resident Evil 1, if it wasn't for Resident Evil 1, I probably never would have got into like Dead Space or Bioshock or The Evil Within. I gotta show some love to Resident Evil 1. I think it's the game that brought me into that survival horror uh, genre. And then last but not least, I gotta go with Halo. I also don't own a physical copy of Halo because guess what? Everything's digital now. So I have it digitally on my Series X, but the original Halo, man. I remember when I first got my OG Xbox, I um, I didn't even know what Halo was. Uh, one of my buddies was like, hey, when you get the Xbox, get that Halo game. And I'm like, what the hell is a Halo game? I'm like, all right, I got it. And boy, when I played that for the first time, it was like a mind-blowing experience. I had never played a shooter like this. You know, before that, I played a GoldenEye, right, on the N64. Halo, when I first played, I was like, this is like a giant world. You can drive vehicles. You can drive tanks. You can have, you can play co-op with a friend. You had NPCs that were not that bad for the, for the time. They were not that bad. They were pretty helpful. Um, and just like, it almost felt like you were like in, in, in a Star Wars movie or something like that. Like it was just epic. And uh, it, I will say this is the first game as a first person shooter game that kind of brought me into that first person shooter uh, genre like Ever since then, I love first-person shooters, and it's all because of Halo. It really opened my eyes to like what a first-person shooter game can be. Uh, it, it doesn't just have to be a military game. This was like a freaking, it was like you're in a movie, a Star Wars movie. And yeah, I really got to show some love to Halo. This game did not have a multiplayer like on Xbox Live. This was, I think, pre-Xbox Live when Halo, the original Halo was out, Combat Evolved. But I had a friend that lived down the street and he um, he used to hook up his Xbox to an Ethernet cable. And there was a I think it was like an application or some kind of software called GameSpy. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it was called GameSpy where we could actually play Halo online with other people. Like, I don't know if it was like maxed out at like two versus two, but man that was so much fun i remember like me and my uh it was my buddy francisco and christian at the time just for hours just playing a halo it might have been illegally illegally i don't know if it was legal but we're playing halo combat evolved online against you know other players and playing you know capture the flag and slayer uh so much fun but uh yeah, those are my five games. Thanks, Jen, for asking me to, to do this in your comments. Like I said, go check out uh, Jen and Scott over at Retro Rivals. I'll leave a link down below to their channel. Re really good content. Really like a true gaming couple right there. Uh, all right, guys. See you guys next time.